All right, so I have a 1949 PA16 Clipper, and today I wanna to go through all the upgrades. I've been working on this the last, unfortunately, year and a half, actually pushing two years. And we're gonna go through that list one by one, show you some up close views of all the individual components. And then we're gonna go over and look at the current condition of this Clipper. It's pretty wild right now, but we did some major upgrades, or major repairs, I should say, just last week. So I'll give you close up views of that and really what's left until we get this thing flying, hopefully in the next three months. So let's get to it. So the first thing that I'm really excited about is the prop, the Cisnic three blade ground adjustable carbon fiber prop. I'm really excited to use that. And back at Oshkosh just last year, I did have this on display and I had the prop there. It was a just a very nice job, custom painted tips. They were actually able to do a custom paint for me for the uh, prop hub. And then they even went the extra mile and suggested doing the prop tips. And then I should say really the, the real extra mile is they went and put together a new design, a Cisnic logo that would actually match the prop because the other ones they have for the, I guess just the props in production, they just really didn't match as far as you know, all the custom, the white and metallic blue. So thanks to Don for uh, mentioning that and actually putting together an awesome logo. So that's the first thing that I was really excited about for the project. And the next thing is carbon fiber slats, tips, and also a split nose bowl. Car carbon Concepts are up in Alaska. They do amazing work. You've probably noticed on a lot of different uh, bush planes. They do a lot of cargo belly pods and uh, just do a lot of really awesome lightweight options for really a lot of the backcountry aircraft, not just the Pipers or the Cubs or the Clippers. Actually, I don't know if there's any Clippers out there that have any Carbon concept stuff because there's not too many. Like I said, there's only 700 and some 736 produced, less than 300 flying today. So anyways, a lot of good carbon concepts adds to or added on to this project. The um, slats are actually metallic blue. They're not all painted yet, but they've got a good start. Next is the O320 B2A 160 horsepower engine upgrades. It's probably by far the biggest upgrade because the horsepower I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but we're going from 108 horsepower to 160 horse. And on top of that, port and polished cylinders and the Vetterman exhaust is gonna bring, bring back even more horsepower that's lost. It's a tuned exhaust. If you're not familiar with Vetterman, they make awesome, awesome exhausts. You'll see a lot on the RV, the RV kit aircraft. They've made thousands of kits. So um, I have that, it's already been test fitted. It's been Cerakoted. So I have huge engine upgrade along with performance upgrades on the upgraded engine. So I don't know exactly how much horsepower I'm gonna have, but they're claiming, and it has been, I think repeated multiple times. They're looking to get close to 180, 182 horsepower on this O320 B2A. A lot of people would disagree with that. I don't know, but uh, it will not have the factory exhaust. So perhaps with the tuned exhaust, we will see the um, horsepower gains like they are seeing. Another thing I have that I'm really excited about is the EMAG. It's electronic ignition. I have dual electronic ignition, which is self-powering at 800 RPMs. I get the better starting capabilities along with efficiency and just it's just a great package. So. Really looking forward to the EMAG for both sides of this engine. The next thing to really, for this engine package that I think really adds a lot to it and it's gonna really help also with performance is engine cooling from McFarlane Aviation. They have amazing powder coat engine baffle kits with the uh, Cal Saver seals. I was able to get that. Again, it was installed at Oshkosh on display last year, if you happen to see that. It was um, there with the prop and the engine and all that on this place. So it is white hammer tone. I think that's what you call it. Yeah, hammer tone, white uh, powder coat. 
It looks amazing. So we're looking forward to using that and getting the benefits. Also BNC, I have some amazing equipment from them. They have just top quality stuff. They have the um, alternator, the lightweight alternator, lightweight starter, and then also they have a oil filter adapter, which is machined very, very nice, just like everything they have. So that's, I think, most of the engine. Um, let's see, one more thing, engine, oil cooler. I have a rear-mounted oil cooler. That's another upgrade. There's an SDC in parallel with the O320. Oil cooler lines, they were custom made by Herber Aircraft. They make just amazing hoses and are super awesome to work with. Um, I believe that's it on the engine. So another upgrade I have is the EarthX battery. I don't know how many pounds, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I saved about 10 pounds, at least 10 pounds, I think on the battery, um, from the original Gill battery to the EarthX. Let's keep moving. We have the EarthX battery, which is awesome, and Alpha Systems. I believe this is a really a lifesaver, and I would like to see more and more of these equipment, more and more of these and similar equipment. But if you're gonna get one, Alpha Angle of Attack Indicators, they just do awesome stuff. They have super awesome quality, and I will have the heads-up display, which will be Really nice, it has a um, cover you put on there, protect it, you can lay it down flat. Um, but I'll be using that very, very closely in different operations that I'll be doing in the stole-ish environment, hopefully. Um, the panel, the panel was custom. If you've not seen any previous videos, I'm, again, I'm just coming through all these, or, or all these upgrades. The panel was a um, custom design by Canon Lasers and they did an amazing job. So they did a topographical map of Southern Ohio, my home airport, and then just put a uh, two coat, Cerakote design, couple different colors. And anyways, they did an awesome job. And in the panel, I have the UAvionics AV30s. I have three of those. And I have the Electronics International, the engine monitoring system. And let's see, going back to Avionics, some of the other equipment I have that work in parallel with what I have on the panel, the AV30s, the reason why I have three. One is going to be obviously my primary attitude indicator. It's going to have my airspeed and all the vital information that you're going to need as far as, you know, typically just flying an aircraft in VFR. The other two, one is going to be primarily dedicated to traffic in, which I'll be using the Sky Center, which is a wingtip mounted green light, nav light slash strobe combination. And then I have the Tel Beacon X, which is a built-in mode S transponder along with ADS-B out. So that's why I have three and they're all gonna work great together. Uh, Electronics International, I think I already mentioned that for the engine monitoring, they make awesome stuff. And I have all the, all the controls or all the sensors that they offer for that. I have the fuel flow, I have the CHT, your uh, cylinder head temperature, the um, EHT exhaust gas temperature. And that's pretty much it on the panel. It's amazing. Uh, moving on to some bigger items, the Shock Monster gear. That's probably like the last upgrade here, that's the big one that I'm really, really, again, excited about. Um, they have just amazing performance. It looks great. It's super strong and robust gear. So Shock Monster gear, shocks, and I have also the steps that they offer, which would be super nice for refueling. Um, door mod, this would be the last mod before we go over and check out this thing, what it actually looks like right now. So the door mod, this is a small upgrade, a friend of mine, Richard, which is a really awesome upgrade for visibility. I'm able to just look out the lower portion of the right door and not only just in flying and having that great visibility, but it's gonna be great for landing in different environments, stolish environments. So um, let's get over here and check out 
all this crazy repairs we just did last week. Going back, if you didn't see a previous video, I had a big issue with the laning gear. I got that new fancy Shock Monster gear and went to put it on because I thought my laning gear was actually bad. And it was just on display at Oshkosh because it wouldn't fit. Well, months later, found out, had some major issues. Let's start over here. This is where I first found the issue, is the aft gear fitting here was tweaked. It was actually tweaked in and up, so it just wasn't even close to even coming close to put, even putting the bolt in, the right size bolt. So at that point, I knew I had some big issues, and we later found back here, there was a buckle in the tube. So what we've done here in the last couple weeks, or actually last week, I went up to Northwest Wisconsin to uh, Ryan's repair. He was able to get me in and help me out on this clipper and get it to where we can actually start moving forward, getting it ready to fly in the next few months. So what we done, a weak part on the clippers, even the stock gear, the original tube in here, it's a um, one and eighth inch OD, but it's a 35 thousandths wall, which is relatively pretty darn thin. So they've had issues with that and with the shock gear, Shock Monster gear, we actually get rid of where it used to be bungees back here, and you put in the Kabang V, which is the typical Cub style gear. So all your load actually goes out to these two fittings. So knowing that they have potential or have a history of issues with these thin wall tubing, went in, cut this out, and actually put a 58th wall thick tube in here. So not only is it new, it's roughly 60% thicker, and that's going to allow us to really utilize the gear and not have to worry about this collapsing and having a prop strike and all the bad stuff that follows. So that's been done. Complete new gear back here. Gear fitting, I should say. It's a crazy $400 universe fitting that's just the reality of it and while we we're at it we went ahead and replaced the new front gear fitting as well because i knew it had been tweaked on and bent and potentially compromised so while we we're at it put a new fitting up there so all new fittings on the left side new thicker wall tube and then back here i'll show a picture here in a second um, this was actually cracked back here when I took off the had a rubber strip and underneath the rubber strip Where the gear stock gear would come up and and basically bang against this tube with that cushion Underneath the cushion the rubber there was actually a metal plate The plate was bowed in and actually had cracks underneath and I believe this right side here it was upside down at the time. I think this one was actually the one that was crushed. It was almost like you took it and just crinkled it in. It was three fourths the way around, cracked up. So in the process of repairing or re rebuilding this, making it stronger, we fixed the gear issue and then found the other issues. And now those are 100% built up, secure and this is going to be ready to rock and roll, what it is now. So what I got to do is basically do some final cleaning. There's some more tubes here I need to clean up. You know, these old airplanes, they just, they really don't look that pretty underneath. But um, with that being said, one thing I found out about this clipper in the process of taking off the primer is I actually didn't see any pitting, which is pretty darn surprising, this 1949 frame. So it makes me feel a lot better about the rest of the fuselage as far as rust and pitting condition. So we're really good up here and ready to get this primed up, start repairing, wrapping fabric, and getting this closed up where we can start putting things back together to stay together. Um, but while I'm talking about fabric, one more thing I wanna mention is we modified, we're gonna bring the fabric actually up and wrap it around this bottom channel. So the stock gear, you would go back, you would actually had an opening here where the gear would be moving and you would have access to the bungees 
and you can see all that. And this right here used to have a, a metal panel here that would go up to the boot cow. But one thing with the Shock Monster gear that I found was you had to actually modify this. It would normally would come straight out and you'd have to modify the little standoff there to where this Kabang V that would come down now would actually crash into that bottom panel. So that was a problem I found, but since we were rebuilding this, we went ahead and tapered this up on both sides and we're gonna wrap fabric all the way up and actually wrap around here. So everything will be covered. I won't have to make a special panel to cover that up and make it look nice. And once it's all covered up, it will look nice and we'll be in a good position to put in the cup style gear and not have any issues there with it crashing. So the last thing I wanna mention that we did whenever we were doing these repairs is with the clipper, they typically have a header tank up here and you can't install your throttle in a normal position. It's actually up here, it's almost like a armrest or something because of the tank being there. So one thing I wanted to do with this new panel and the new setup is actually relocate the throttle and also the mixture. So we added some additional support down here to basically mount the mixture and the throttle through it to give it more support. And I took this panel here from, uh, I call it the Texas Clipper I have that I've been using for a lot of parts, is we're gonna take this and mount it, kind of redesign it, get rid of the breakers and stuff, and have this like a sub panel down here and have the mixture and throttle cross through these two plates. I might also, if I have room, I can configure it. I wanna put the primer down here as well because that's another thing that you a lot of times put pretty good pressure on and it's gonna need some additional support. So the mixture though, I wanna mention, I got a brand new one. <clears throat> it's from Farland Aviation. It's just awesome quality stuff. So um, I need to get a new throttle from them as well. I'll be getting that and getting that installed. So hopefully in the next two to three weeks, I'm gonna get this panel back in because I really don't like seeing it out. I just basically took everything apart real quick here in the last couple weeks to go and have good access to get the stuff repaired. But that's where we're at with the Clipper. And I hope you follow along here closely the next couple months because my goal honestly is to get this thing flying in the next 90 days and it will have progress every week. I'll probably do an update every, at least every month until completion and there'll be a lot done each time there's an update. So hope you enjoyed this video and until next time you guys stay safe, be blessed. I will see you in the next one. Later.